What's going on, leaguers? Welcome to the Spectacular Spoiler League. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City Hazy Roman. As always, I'm joined by the God of Night, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And today, we are in the Hall of Spoilers to talk about Black <laughs> Lightning, everybody. Black Lightning, aka Jefferson Pierce, man. Yep. So, specifically, we want to know, or we're asking the question. Will Black Lightning be a part of the Hourverse? Will Black Lightning be in the Hourverse, man? Uh, basically, we got some uh, semi-confirmation that Black Lightning would not be part of the Hourverse. Hmm. Indeed, we did. I, I, I feel like crying <laughs> here and there. I'm not going to lie. Because we, we let's be honest, we all, we all wanted it. So, essentially, uh, Mark Pedowitz, um, he's the network president over at the CW uh, during the upfronts, he said that there. First of all, he said we do not aim to, to do a five-way crossover, so don't expect this fall for it to be Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash, Arrow, Black Lightning doing it up for a huge five-episode crossover. Um, he said Black Lightning at this time is not part of the Hourverse; it is a separate situation. Now, the key words there, okay? At this time, and. Not part of the Hourverse and separate situation. Essentially, I mean, this is not the first time that we've seen this, okay? So when Supergirl first came out over on the C and uh, no, on CBS, mm -hmm. right? This was a this was obviously was a, a more difficult, more sensitive situation because CBS is a different network than the CW. They couldn't necessarily openly comment about any type of crossovers. Yeah. That being said, it was very much said that Supergirl would not be part of the Hourverse, despite CBS. And CW both being owned by uh, Warner Brothers in part. Mm -hmm. um, so we already knew that that wasn't going to be the case. But what happened was, and this is obvious, they wanted to see the success of Supergirl first before they made any type of connections. And what we saw in uh, The Flash, um, I believe it was during uh, the end. Of, I believe it was the end of season two. Mm -hmm. No, it was season. It was in during season two when he was traveling to Earth 2. You know, he's running through this uh, this portal, traveling to another uh, world in the universe, in the multiverse, yeah. and we see images of different things mm -hmm. from the past, some from the present, some from alternate universes, and in particular, we see an image of Supergirl, which shocked us all because no one expected it, and lo and behold, that was the first inclination that Supergirl, who was still at CBS at the time, was somewhat connected to the Hourverse. That being said... It was more so that it was an alternate Earth. Now, the question is, will Black Lightning be in the Hourverse? Is it a possibility? What do you think, man? Not in season one. Not in season not one. Perfectly, it, perfectly said. Not in season one. And when I first heard this, uh, <laughs> I, I guess my feelings were summed up by, by the phrase, oh, shucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> and it was all shucks and I kicked some dirt. Because, <laughs> because I I felt I mean why not have them ha have Black Lightning and the characters in that show to be part of the CW verse. Obviously, they don't do crossovers all the time. They do maybe like once or twice a year. But then uh, I thought to myself, since they have a multiverse, it doesn't mean that they won't ever cross paths. And Absolutely. it didn't happen until I believe it was Supergirl season two. I mean, I'm, I'm blanking, mm -hmm. right? That was the first time they did the crossover. Yes, Supergirl season two. And uh, and you know, obviously, Supergirl went from CB CBS to actually no, it was season one. Season one. No, I'm, it was season one. Season. Yeah, it was the end of season yeah. one. It was near I think it was season two. That's when it, they picked it up at the CW or whatever. Right, right, right. But uh, you know, they they don't necessarily have to yet. There's no there's no rush. There's no rush. I mean, these shows are going to be here for a while. Uh, Arrow and Flash, Supergirl, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they they easily have the means to just say open up a portal. They're like, hey, you don't know me. I'm the Flash. I'm super fast. I'm from <laughs> Earth One. You're from Earth Thirty. Whatever. I need your help. You're superhero. Mm. And that's it. And of course, of course, Black Lightning is going to say yes. It, actually, he might say no. He's going to be like, I can't leave my family. But then, mm. I mean, who knows? Maybe his, his daughters will be like, Dad, we got to go. This is crazy. It's another universe. And then he decides <laughs> to go. So it's, it's not totally that, you know, a complete bummer. And I think really the, the, the biggest advantage is it will allow this show to, to kind of 
build a foundation and stay on its own two feet without having to have anything to do with the other shows because while arrow the existence of arrow did help flash in a bit arrow or rather flash was fantastic in that first season because they really focused and built that show from the ground up and made it its own thing right right i mean you you mentioned something important there where you're talking about uh you know black lightning not wanting to leave his family potentially Mm -hmm. And how that relates to, you know, Black Lightning potentially being the Arrowverse um, is something that Cress Williams, who plays uh, Jefferson Pierce in the show, um, something he was asked about. And, uh, you know, he had the following to say. And this was during uh, the red carpet at the CW's uh, Upfront, which is basically, uh, you know, just kind of like them showing off, you know, trailers and stuff from the shows. Mm -hmm. So he said in regarding uh, his inclusion in the Arrowverse, he said, I think it would be interesting I think it would be interesting down the line. Eventually, we're going to have have probably three superheroes on our show with me and the daughters. Mm-hmm. Once we have, once we become some kind of team, it would be great to go as a team onto another show. It's going to be fun developing that because with every good thing, there's going to be a lot of wrinkles. Now, that's not a confirmation, but what it sounds like to me mm-hmm. is first, Black Lightning is trying to build up its own yeah. thing. And then we'll talk about the potential for going over to, to other shows. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're not familiar with the Black Lightning character, uh, he also mentioned something about his daughters, who we saw in the trailer. They both have, they both showed signs of having powers and abilities. In the comics, his daughters are respectively called Lightning and Thunder each, and they all have their own power set. And what he's alluding to is, you know, fighting, essentially creating a crime-fighting family team, which is something the Alvarez actually doesn't have right now. You know, uh, with the exception of, you know, Barry Allen and Wally West, technically they're brothers. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, definitely there's that. But I think what he's saying here is that there is potential. It's just that it's not something they're think of, thinking about at the moment. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, if the Arrowverse did bring in uh, Black Lightning, what would be some advantages to having him in, in the Arrowverse, man? Well, uh, I guess... It's, it, it seems this show is very much influenced by the recent Netflix Marvel show, Luke Cage, that came out uh, Definitely. last year. That's uh, Definitely. obviously primarily black cast and mm. is dealing with issues of uh, living in the you know inner city, urban sure. struggle. Sure. Um, mm. And I think one of the major things that's cool about from what we've seen from the first trailer is the fact that Black Lightning is is trying to do right, you know, despite the fact that he's probably in a bad neighborhood. It's overrun by uh, the One Hundred Gang, I believe they're called, right? Yeah. Uh, and he has two daughters. Uh, he's a husband, right? Yeah, he has a wife. His mm. wife is there. Yeah, it's but pot- it's possible that his wife has died at this point because I do believe Jefferson Pierce is actually a a single father. Oh, okay. A, uh, a a solo parent, single parent. So his mother, the mother somehow dies. They may even relate that to the 100 gang. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, I I mean this show, uh, in terms of how grounded it is, brings a completely different tone than any of the other CW shows. Uh, I, I agree. For starters, he's not, you know, a young former playboy, you know. <laughs> he's not, you know. I mean, he's not young. He's not really, young at all. You know? He's not some young, uh, you know, fresh out of college forensics <laughs> investigator. He's not a yeah. young uh, Kryptonian who worked at a super, uh, uh, you know, at a what a media company, a global media company. Yeah. He's he's middle class, and he's an adult, and he just doesn't have. He, I don't think he's gonna have time for some of the silly nonsense that goes on with uh, Supergirl, Flash, and even Arrow sometimes. Mm. Uh, that's true. That's a good. That's a, that's actually pretty yeah, funny. Yeah. We're not gonna be. I mean, I'm sure you'll have a relationship at some point, but it'll be. I gotta make sure my daughters are safe. I gotta make sure I teach them sure. how to use their powers. I gotta make sure I teach these kids. I'm a teacher. <laughs> Is he a teacher or a principal? Yeah. He's a teacher, right? He's a principal. principal. He's a principal. Yeah, he, oh, he's yep. got to take care of the whole school. That's see, that's even yeah. that's even better, I think, because he has to maintain the entire school and make sure that you know this is a safe learning environment, despite. You know, this gang, I mean, you see it in the trailer, the gang walks up in the class and holds somebody up at gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a little wild, man. So uh it'll be very different in tone and it might uh it, it might give Arrow a run for its money in terms of 
grittiness. Uh, it might make Arrow look a little silly, I think, or maybe the, the writers at Arrow will kind of see what Black Light, the people who are in Black Lightning are doing, and say, okay, yeah. let's if we want to maintain this grittiness, let's uh, let's do a little bit better job, you know, because Black Lightning sure. is they're, they're keeping it real, not to <laughs> not to sound corny. <laughs> Dag, my man, my man just like <laughs> boiled it down to like possibly one of the the most blackest, uh, the quote unquote blackest phrases of all time. He's like keeping it real. <laughs> no, because it, it, yeah, these other CW shows they deal with, uh, they try to deal with human issues, but sure. they do get very fantastical. Uh, but Black Lightning yeah, seems like it's yeah, you know, he's a superhero with the suit and he has the lightning powers and all that. But it's, it seems like it's very closely tied to to uh, themes such as family education sure. uh being a teenager being in a you know being mm. a parent uh living in the yeah. inner city which none of these other shows really do well i mean arrow mm. is sort of you know i mean star city is a very bad city but i don't think it's really going to approach it the way that black Lightning's is going to approach it so it'll be very interesting in terms of just again i mean this this is these are the things we talk about when we want i guess diversity in shows sure it, it's not that yes we got to person of color in the show it's that there's all this other stuff that's gonna make the show rich and interesting and and, and you know allow for possible storylines like everything i just mentioned right now is all a plus uh sure. and, and i sure. think it'll add uh more layers and more texture to the already robust cw verse when, mm-hmm. whether they interact in the first season or not just it's part of the slate of programming and, and i think it's and don't forget, we also have Legends of Tomorrow as well. So kind of jumping sure. from, I mean, the shows are they're, they're relatively different. You know, some a little more Definitely. similar than others. But it'll be nice to kind of just jump from this show and then this one's a little lighthearted and fun. And then all of a sudden we get Black Lightning and it's, you know, we're kind of kind of sitting down and really kind of enjoying some gripping drama, so to speak. Sure, sure. And I mean, you brought up a, a really, a really a fantastic point about the not just diversity in terms of, uh, you know, uh, culture mm-hmm. um or or background um uh, racial background but just in portrayal of you know the for like you said the inner city like one thing about arrow mm-hmm. that i kind of always uh you know felt was at a loss was their portrayal of the glades so early on in arrow definitely in like season one uh and definitely season two with uh rory harper mm-hmm. they're always you know referring to the grades as like this the glades as this you know, area of, uh, of debauchery, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's ravaged by crime. But one thing about the glades is that it just never really looked like a place that was all that bad. It never really, yeah. they never really showed some of the, the things we know that could be yeah, in an inner I, city, for example, uh-huh. you know, uh, crime or drug dealers or, you know, uh, prostitution I, or, yeah, I, you know, even something like as simple as graffiti or, you know, cars that are ransacked or something like that. They could have done a way better job, I, especially with, you know, season one being about the undertaking. Malcolm Merlin's whole point was to destroy the glades because it was such such a it was bringing on the city. But they never really portrayed that. Really I well. totally agree. And, and both of us, you know, we cut, we've come from the hood. Yeah. yeah and we know what we, that is we've we seen know it. and i think something you touched on is you know j- just the name the glades reminds me of the name the narrows from the batman movies right <laughs> and, and, yeah, and i think that this yeah. perspective is looking from the outside in i mean obviously arrow sure. you know oliver queen is a rich guy he doesn't live in the glades you know so he is on the outside, he is on the outside. he's looking from yeah. the outside in so it but Roy harper could have been our he winner could have been he could have been uh, but it's just the way it was presented. I totally agree. It just seemed inauthentic. It just it just didn't really click that this was the hood or, or something dangerous because it didn't really seem any different from any other locale that you see on the show that has villains and people shooting each other and all that kind of stuff. And, sure, all they did was have some smoke coming out of uh, some some great every yeah. so often. That was pretty much it. <laughs> but this Black Lightning has the opportunity to show us from the inside out. Sure, and, and I think that is. Uh, what will be what will be different and what will be interesting and, and what could possibly work in terms of that depiction again of, of the inner city uh just kind of yeah. really showing you know wide breadth of characters like a spectrum of just a lot of people trying to get by a lot of imperfect people trying to get by and, and dealing with a lot of the things that most of us deal with but on top of that they got the 100 gang running up in the schools and kidnapping people yeah yeah i mean that was i mean that is 
crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even in the trailer, that's that's a scary situation. You know what? It, it reminded me very much of uh, of uh, of dangerous dangerous minds. Ah, yeah. Of uh, of dangerous minds. It also reminded me of uh, you know the movie starring Morgan Freeman, uh, where he's a principal. Mm. Um, let me look it up real quick. But essentially, you know, it evoked this uh, this this problem with youth, yeah. this issue with youth and them needing guidance. And I feel like with the characters in our verse, there hasn't been a character yet who serves as a role model. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Flash is probably the Flash and maybe Supergirl come close. But I feel like with Supergirl, it's a little bit like she wears a Superman symbol and she re she represents hope. And it's just like, you know, it's a little bit it's shoehorned in just because she has, she's super strong and she can save mm -hmm. people. Whereas with Jefferson Pierce, the guy, by the way, that movie's called Lean yeah. On Me. I knew it was Lean On Me because I know the song, <laughs> but I didn't want to say sure. that. But anyway, Lean On Me starring Morgan Freeman. Um, but yeah, I think with Jefferson Pierce... This idea that he could be, he's this older, more seasoned character who has this life experience, could serve, serving as a role model. I think that's something that's really, really important for not just storytelling, but for today's yeah. youth. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, just to touch on this conversely, I mean, really quick, what are some, I guess, things that, some benefits if, let's say, Black Lightning is not part of the Arrowverse? I mean, one thing I can think of is that, you know, at the very least, it would, uh, you know, allow for easier storytelling on the part of the the, the Hourverse mm. team um, and Greg Berlanti. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes too much inclusion with these shows creates issues with cohesion. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, where it's hard to tell this, the same story. I mean, a a uh, I guess a solution to that is what they did with Supergirl, where Supergirl. Um, is they basically just put her on a whole separate separate uh, planet. Mm. And although I, our universe or multi so a separate Earth in the multiverse, and while I didn't like that initially, I you know recently in the, the events of the uh, the end of season two, you kind of see some big things happening with you know an invasion type uh, situation. It's hard to believe that if they were on the same Earth, Supergirl wouldn't just call in Flash, Green Arrow, and call you know have some reinforcements in National yeah. City. So I do understand that, man. But uh, what do you think in that regard? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. It allow the show to, again, stand on its own two feet, not ha not deal with any plot holes or inconsistencies with certain events, like you said, that could happen within mm. the universe. Uh, that you sure. think to yourself, oh, well, why didn't the Flash like do this? Or why didn't you know he call Green Arrow or this or that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and... It could it could also allow for a bigger cast of characters. I mean, maybe they could also you know take a few characters here and there, and throw them into the Black Lightning show. Sure. And, and kind of you know kind of enrich the background and the cast and and the the story elements of the show itself. Uh, but yeah, no, I totally agree with what you said. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I think also with you know if if they chose not to include it in the Hourverse, I think. You know, it would allow, like you said, for maybe some potential characters to be in there that, you know, don't necessarily fit the mode, mold of the, the rest of the Hourverse. I think sometimes tone, uh, the shift in tone can... I mean, we have seen we see with Arrow, for example, mm -hmm. right? When Green Arrow, Oliver Queen is hanging out with, uh, you know, uh, the Flash and Supergirl. Yeah, it's funny, you know, to see Diggle react to all these powers, but there is something innately different with Arrow that, you know, brings in the question of, like, how do these characters fit in with these other ones? Yeah. And, and, you know what I'm saying? And and how could, and tonally, there's a potential issue. And, yeah. and here's one thing that I think doesn't affect Arrow, but it's something that I've thought about. Um, and actually, they, they did sort of work it into Arrow. And that that's particularly the Flash traveling through time and changing things. I mean, he changed, he changed sure. Diggle's daughter into a son, or is it a son to a daughter? Yeah, she was originally Sarah yeah. Diggle, but he changed him to to John Diggle Jr. as a result of Flash. So there was a period of time where they didn't address that, uh, and we were both kind of thinking to ourselves, like, so what happened? What was going on in Star City as the Flash was literally saving the Earth? Like the Earth was about there was a wormhole <laughs> that was going to engulf <laughs> yeah. the entirety of the Earth. 
So, you know, the, yeah, that was the end of season yeah, one. That 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 kind of shenaniganery that happens in Flash sure. and in Supergirl, it, it'd be best yeah. to kind of isolate Black Lightning from that because again, we don't know the 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 strength of Black Lightning Black Lightning's powers. You know, we don't know how sure. how uh, how much he'll fit in or how much he won't fit in, depending on what uh, you know they, they portray in the show. Yeah, I think it'll be best for now, for now, at least until we see, you know, uh, how Black Lightning does. You know, it could be worth the investment if he turns out to be, you know, this this really, you know, it turns out to be a really great show. But I think overall, guys, I think overall leaguers, we are generally in favor of Black Lightning being part of the Hourverse, but just give us some time. Let us find it. Let it find its own identity. Yeah, and this this may sound like a very silly thing to even say, a really silly reason. I mean, I mentioned it before and we kind of joked about it, but if and when... They do cross over. You know, let's have a little, you know, uh, uh, meetup of, of Black Lightning and his two daughters and Diggle and, and Iris and Joe and Wally. And Mr. Terror. Terrific. Mr. Terrific. You know, just to, uh, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we're like the only, <laughs> we're like the only black people here in uh, Central City. It's nice, <laughs> it's nice, to, nice to meet you guys. There was one here. She was a barista, but I don't know what happened to her. She. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm all for that, man. But if I see any Kool Aid, <laughs> fried chicken, or watermelon, I'm calling shenanigans. All right. I mean, hazy. There's got to be at least one fried chicken spot in the Black Lightning show. <laughs> It, it's. I mean, come on. It's the hood. It's got to, You got to, one shot. You see it in the corner, and that's it. We just address that, and we move on. Maybe Big Belly Burger you had some fried chicken sticks or something. Okay. They could. They could. Uh, they could get down <laughs> on man. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, guys, we're getting out of the hole. Spoilers. Let us know what you think about Black Lightning. Do you want to see it in the, in the hour verse? Do you think it would be better if it wasn't? Uh, in the hour verse, let us know what you think, and by all means, join the spectacular spoiler league by hitting that subscribe button. Listen, Black Lightning may not be in the hour verse, but we're inviting you to our universe. Come with us, hang out with the spectacular spoiler league, become a leaguer, and drop us a like if you like anything you heard today. Anyway, guys, I'm getting out of here. This is Hazy Rome, Deep Voice. We signing out of all the spoilers. Peace out, Please. y'all.